In this video, we're going to look at ions and ionic compounds. <clears throat> so an ion or ions are charged atoms and this is, tends to be due to the loss or gain of electrons. So in essence, um, an atom that's not charged the number of protons equal the number of electrons. And an ion, on the other hand, um, the number of protons will either be greater or less than the number of electrons. So there are two main types. We have cations. And in this case, with cations, the number of protons are greater than the number of electrons. So these, ten, these, are, these have a positive charge. We have more positive protons than we have electrons. And these tend to occur in metals. So, for example, uh, potassium plus would be a ion, a cation. Aluminum three plus would be a cation, and iron three plus would be a cation. And um, you can go in, and we showed you how to um, look at the periodic table and figure out what the number of electrons and protons are. So if we want to just do this quickly for, let's take aluminum as an example. So if we want to figure out what's going on with aluminum, the atomic number for aluminum is 13. So we'll write that there. Um, so that means that uh, aluminum will always have 13 protons. So if we have aluminum three plus, then that means that we have three extra protons than we have electrons. So for aluminum three plus, so uh, for aluminum zero, that's gonna be 13 protons and 13 electrons. For aluminum three plus, that's gonna be 13 protons and to get the charge of plus three, that's only gonna have 10 electrons. So um, that's how we get aluminum three plus and that's how you can kind of understand it in terms of what we did with the atomic symbols. Uh, so let me just write the 13 down there. Now let's look at anions. So with anions, these are negatively charged. So these tend to have a greater number of electrons than they do um, protons. So they have a negative charge and these tend to occur in metals. And I'm sorry, these tend to occur in non-metals. So the classic examples are O2 minus, Cl minus, for example. And then we have another category, um, which is called polyatomic ions. So these are molecules. So we talked about in the last video, we talked about a molecule. So all of these examples up here, cations and anions, these are elements. These are atoms of an element with a charge, meaning it's a single pure element, an atom from a single pure element, but it has a charge. In the case of polyatomic ions, these are molecules. So these are collections of atoms that have a charge. And um, these come as a unit. So if you look, SO4, that's one sulfur and four oxygens, this entire unit of atoms comes with a charge. Uh, we can do NO3 minus as an example, and we can do OH minus. So uh, OH minus is a good example. OH, if you draw the Lewis structure for it, you don't have to know how to do this right now, but just to show you, the O and the H are bound together, and that, that shows all the electrons. And this entire subunit of the OH bound together, that's what has the charge. So that just gives you an idea of what a polyatomic ion is. So now let's talk about what you have to memorize in terms of um, charges. Okay, so there are some tables that you should start to memorize, but also the periodic table can be helpful. Um, so if you look, this table, table 2.4, groups things by the periodic table. So if you look, group 1A, which is the first group all the way on the left of the periodic table, this is the group that has lithium, sodium, potassium, all those guys, this is going to have a plus one charge. So at the top left of your periodic table, you can just write above that group plus one. 
Now, if you go one group over on your periodic table, the one that has beryllium, magnesium, calcium, above that one, that's group 2A, you can write plus 2. For transition metals, we don't generally, that they have multiple different oxidation states, so there's nothing to memorize there. We would have to give you other information in order to um, come up with the charge for a transition metal. But once we get to the aluminum row, which is group 3A, that row has 3 plus, plus 3 charge. Then down at the bottom here, so tin and lead, you should memorize those two. So these are down at the bottom on the, on the periodic table where we still have metals. Um, this is, these are below the metalloids. Uh, th these are plus two. So these, are, these two are ones that you're going to have to memorize. And bismuth three, three plus, that's another one that you're going to have to memorize. Now for the non-metals, uh, the nitrogen has a minus three charge. And then we have O2 minus, S2 minus, uh, Se2 minus, and tellurium 2 minus. So above group 6A, you can write minus two. And above group 7A, this is the um, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodide, and hydrogen. Uh, these get a minus one. This table here has the polyatomic ions. So this is where you have to start to do some memorization. Um, you do have to memorize these polyatomic ions. So you have to know that carbonate is CO3 with a two minus charge. So not only do you have to know the compound formula, you have to know the charge. So we recommend making um, flashcards for this so that you have those memorized.